My name is Vahid Chitsas, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Yeah, uh, so I'm Devon. I am the founder of The Balance Effect and The Bebo Company, and I am currently residing in Cincinnati, Ohio in the States. Uh, from Ohio in the house. Let's dive into it. For entrepreneurs, why is it important for us to go through self-development? Wow. How much time do we have? There's so many important aspects to this. Um, I feel like when you take on being an entrepreneur and really starting to create something of your own, it's vital that you have self-awareness. It's vital that you can start to look at you know, where you hit roadblocks. I really love um, Gay Hendricks' book, Zone of Genius. You need to be able to get into a mindset of continual growth, but knowing when you hit roadblocks and knowing how to remove those roadblocks so that you can continue to build your brand, build a successful company. I feel like a lot of people, especially in the entrepreneur field, feel like they hit so many roadblocks and they feel like they're failing. And they don't realize that failure is made up and failure is not a, a real thing. It's what is this teaching me? What's the lesson? But if you don't have enough awareness, if you're not able to look and do introspection, you're going to continue to, you know, hit these, hit these stops. And you don't want that. <laughs> How do you raise that awareness? I think you have to be brutal. Like, on, like, I'm trying to figure it out. Maybe I should stop doing that on my own. Maybe I should ask for help, some help. How do you get to that level of awareness so you know that this is happening and you need, you shouldn't be taking it as a negative yeah. um, thing happening to you. You should be looking at the positive because when one door closes, multiple doors open. Absolutely. And maybe I don't think things happen for accident. So if yeah. that business is not going and it's crashing constantly, yeah. universe is telling you that you should learn something from it and take that and go into something else. But how do you learn, how do you learn to raise that awareness? So if there's a few methods, first, it's a skill set. So you're going to have to start practicing it. And you're going to have to stop being afraid of looking at the things that don't feel good. A lot of the times we're like, that doesn't feel good. I don't want to deal with that. I don't have time for that. And you're, you're ignoring it. But what's, what you're not realizing is that when you don't sit down and look at what's holding you back and you don't sit down and go, okay, let's reflect. What did I learn? What did I, what, what roadblocks did I come up against this month, you know, this week? Where am I at? Where do I feel like I'm, I'm being held back? When you can pinpoint what that looks like externally, then you can start going internally. Um, so then let's say that you, you, you feel like you failed at this project and you don't really know where to go. Then you can go and say, do I feel like giving up? Do I feel like persevering? How can I learn from this? When you say, how can I learn from this? You're bringing awareness to the fact of something you didn't know something that um, that could have been, you know, causing havoc and hurt and, and things in your life that creates patterns. A lot of the times human beings don't realize that we have all these subconscious patterns running unconsciously. And we have to become aware of our belief system. We have to become aware of why we're doing what we're doing. We have to make sure that what we're doing is something that we're passionate about or we're going to get burnt out. And you have to, you have to balance body, mind, uh, awareness, and health. Because if you keep giving, 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 you're going to get burnt out. And that could actually be, you could get confused with hitting roadblocks and being burnt out. Those are not the same thing. And a lot of people mix, um, they sacrifice their own health and well-being for the sake of trying to get more money or, you know, be more successful. But you cannot give any more to anything else that you don't give to yourself. So it's about realizing where your imbalances are in your health and your well-being. It's about realizing what failures you have been presented and why those even occurred. And then looking at how those things can be prevented in the future by different actions, by different beliefs, by different approaches. How do I upgrade my belief system? Oh, that's a tricky one. Um, so Give us some tips that you we can utilize today. Like what are some of the tips? I don't expect it for me to just, you know, to be changed. I expect things because I didn't get to my belief system where it is today, yesterday, is right. taking time. So yeah. in order for me to change them and upgrade them, uh, it will take time. So what are some of the tips that, you know, individuals, especially entrepreneurs during these times, could, uh, could upgrade themselves? Well, it's first realizing that your beliefs are creating a reality. What you believe is what is reflected externally to you first. Then you're, you're going to want to look at, okay, how can I look at what my beliefs are? And you do that through your value system. Make a list of all the things that you value in your life and then go back by that list and go, why do I, why, why do I value this? 
And you can particularly create a value list towards your, you know, your job or your success or whatever you're trying to create and go, what do I value about this? Why am I building this? What's, what's, where's my integrity, my self-worth and my commitment at? A lot of the times we have various levels of integrity and self-commitment and commitment to other things. And, and we can get overwhelmed if we're not checking in with ourselves. The next thing is I like to teach mindfulness practices. I like to teach an up, up, approach to meditation because that's going to bring and force you to go inside internally. And through that practice, what you'll notice is that you're probably not in the present moment and you're going and going and going. Something that's so funny about the human system and how we work is that when you create a, a nerve pathway and you create a system in your body and a belief system that goes off of momentum, the more that you give your energy to it, the more that it keeps kind of going and developing and expanding. This can be in a negative way. You need to realize the things that are going in a negative direction and then reverse it by becoming aware of what, what direction you really want to go into. What is it that you want? So I would say in a nutshell to, to begin with, find a meditation and mindfulness practices, get really clear in your core belief system, your value system, and you can define that towards your, your job or what you're trying to create. And then also start learning the process of reflection and being okay with not what is failure, but the lessons behind what you're being shown. So let me get this straight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain like I will explain to a five-year-old for myself to hear it, so you could verify that what I understood is correct. Let's say we're building a city. We got all these neural paths that are being built in our brain. We don't like some of these roads that we built, but we have to kind of get rid of them and build new ones. New ones take time. Mm -hmm. It's not like, oh, I'm going to wipe it on the map and then jog another <laughs> road and it just happen, right? So I got to build these. How do you build these new neural paths? Well, it's going to take practice and awareness. So I like to give, actually, my clients the example of a sandbox. Let's say you have a nice, clean, new sandbox and there's, like, no footprints or fingerprints or anything in it, right? Look at that sandbox as your, as your mind, as the, the slate of where all your behaviors lie. Now take a stick and create a squiggle in that sandbox. That's a first, that's a behavior, that's a pattern. Now let's say you have that pattern and that pattern isn't helping you in life, right? First, you need to become aware of the pattern. Then you need to become aware of how much momentum that pattern has, has, has in, your, in your mind, in your behavior. Then what you can do is say, what is a different belief? What is a different pattern that I do want to implement? And what is this and how can I remove this one? You first have to be aware of what is what you're ideally wanting versus what you already have. A lot of us go, oh God, I have this belief in my system and I just don't know what to do with it. The awareness is the biggest part. After you have the awareness, you allow it, you accept that that is there no matter how much it might be hard to look at. And then you go, what is it that I can, how can I shift this behavior into a better one? Then you're gonna take the steps to implement those actions. But actions are a byproduct of your thoughts. Your thoughts are a byproduct of your feelings and your feelings are a byproduct byproduct of your belief systems so you can have several core or limiting belief systems in your in your um in your makeup and not realize that that's creating just this one intense pathway and limitation in your life so it could be several things that you need to be aware of so here's my question what are the difference between beliefs and knowings beliefs and knowings right well beliefs are created and stored in the body as memory and knowing is coming more so from your intuition Give us an example. So let's say your beliefs are what like I don't believe I, my mom loves me. I know my mom loves me because you feel it, and feeling is directed towards your intuition. You don't think your mom loves you. You know your mom loves you because you feel it. Now, when yeah, because you thinking is more, more more logical side. I'm sorry. Thinking is more logical. If I'm using my brain, is more on the logical side. Correct. So here, but it's so subtle that most people don't have that subtleness. I feel like it's very important and very vital to develop that subtlety. You need to be able to discern what you're feeling and thinking. And we cross the two and make them, and it's like they're the same thing, but they're not. When someone says, like, let's say you grew up in a household where someone was like, you're smart, you're so smart, and you never really felt smart. So you're going against what you think you know and what you're being told. Or if someone told you that you're not smart. You know, and then you, you attach yourself to that idea. That idea becomes a belief. Then you grow up thinking you're not smart versus knowing that you are, knowing that you could be, knowing that you have that potential. 
because you do. Limitations are, are false and they're perceived limitations. And that's because we've attached ourselves to some kind of false system or we're judging ourselves. You need to remove non-judgment if you can practice the practice that because <laughs> that is hot that you're, you're dropping bombshells over here that is like one of the hardest things to do on the planet like that's like putting a man on, on mars like three times in one year yeah. you're like <laughs> and, and that's and that's another that's something that i think i love that you just pointed that out because it's something that's so far few and in between it's not done very often but if you want permanent results and you like you can you can use your willpower and you can use your force and you can power through and like ignore all these signals and just keep going. However, you're gonna keep coming up to the same challenges and situations because you're not dealing with why they're even occurring in the first place. So yeah, it's about not judging going into these deeper aspects of yourself and not judging these the things that you come up against, but using that as momentum and as motivation to continue to move forward. I agree with that hundred percent. You need to definitely do that. So as an entrepreneur or a business owner, in order for me to give back to the community and provide good services so I'm making profit and I'm making impact, how much time do you think this process that you just explained on a daily basis should take away from my other things that I'm doing? Or what this routine, how I much time do I need? I feel like a ritual and a routine is vital. An everyday ritual and a routine. You have to give the time to yourself that you give externally, period. And you have to accept that. And that can be really hard if you've been telling yourself for 20 years that you don't have enough time. <laughs> That's a belief that you've been telling yourself because time comes from you. So I feel like if you're going to start creating this from the very beginning, that in the mornings and in the evenings are the most vital times because you're going into different brainwave states. Now, I would suggest that you take five minutes in the morning when you wake up, sit presently, use mindfulness meditation to connect to your breath, connect to the inner part of you so you're not just running off of patterns that have been going, and then get present with yourself so that you know what you're feeling, so that you know that you, you, know you can discern what you're feeling and from what you're thinking, and so you can get clear on what direction you actually want to put your energy towards. We keep running on hamster wheels most of the time and not actually directing our own energy. So the morning and in the evening ritual is really vital, I feel. No, I, I agree with that 100%. And I'm, I'm, I'm having that challenge currently where there's too many things I'm doing, mm -hmm. putting out too much fires or initiating a lot of different things. And that's just the nature of that. Literally, I'm in communication with about 10 to about 30 influencers on a daily basis. Okay. So to me, it's like when I wake up in the morning, it's, it's my morning, but it was their afternoon. So the messages are piling up. So if I don't go through it for one day or if I don't go through in the morning, by nighttime, we're talking about an avalanche of DMs, <laughs> and, yeah. and it's a, it's, it's, it, it becomes overwhelming. Where it, it, so definitely that's important. But you think five minutes is enough? Don't be shy. You think five minutes I is enough? I think five minutes is where you should start, because at the end of the day, it's not about how much you can do and how 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 good you can get at it. It's about doing it consistently. And if you're gonna try and do something like that for thirty minutes. They're not going to be able to be consistent with it if that's something that's so new to you and you don't have enough time. You know what I Got mean? It. It's like it's like too much on your plate at one time. So five minute increments and then increase. If you feel like you have five minutes down, then heck yeah, bump that up to ten and so on and so forth. Um, but I think there's something interesting that you and it's kind of having all the areas kind of expanding, right, and growing. So it sounds like maybe you need to do some outsourcing, and that can be difficult for. Entrepreneur, because we feel like maybe, oh, I'm afraid, like, I now have to teach this or explain this to somebody, or like, you know. But if you're not giving other tasks to other people or individuals, you're going to just continue get to get more work and then feel overwhelmed by it. I agree with that 100. percent Two vocabularies I like to clarify on the definition first. One is mindfulness, because we're talking yeah. about mind. Mind is not your brain. Brain is a muscle, so mind is different fullness so we're talking about being full what is it what is your definition of because people just throw these words i like just do meditations when i empty my brain i'm just passing out i'm like cool this is relaxing this is chilling thank you so i'm kind of yeah. uh, putting myself on a chance where i'm like sleeping and then the, the meditation, so I'm going to let you respond to that. So what is mindfulness? What is the definition of that? And what does it mean? 
and how do I know I have accomplished that level? Okay, so mindfulness is being present, okay? It's being in the present moment. How often do you think most people, and including yourself, can actually say that I'm living moment to moment to moment. Because if you think about it, there's only ever now. We're always talking about the future or we're being here by the past, but there's only ever now. So when mindfulness is being in the present moment, it's not worrying about what happened to you yesterday or five minutes ago or 10 years ago. It's not worrying about where you're going. It's worrying about what can I do and where I want to go right now. What does that action step look like? And then taking that step and staying in the present moment. And it could be a little difficult. I will add a little point to this that it's going to start. I, I, I like mindfulness meditation because it teaches you how to observe your thoughts because it's hard to be in the present moment when your, your mind's all racing. So you need to still your thoughts so that you can drop down into the present moment. So that's why I like the two. So does that mean no thoughts? Yeah. Well, it doesn't mean just no thoughts. That's the point to get to. That's where you want to be, where you can act and not have to continuously have thoughts. But it's about slowing it down enough to be able to get present. If you're completely racing and just over, you're not going to be able to sit down and, and be in the present moment. The present moment doesn't seem as important to you as what you're thinking. You need to be able to at least slow your thoughts down enough so that you can feel comfortable being in the present moment. The only reason we're not ever in the present moment is because if we're trying to get somewhere than where we are right now, but there's only ever right now. <laughs> well, well, the irony, why do we do that? <laughs> you know? No comment. <laughs> yeah, because if you, we're trained. We're literally trained to do. We're, it's almost like a condition of society to go, 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 and do, 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 and build, build, build. But you don't realize that you're trying to build and do and, 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 and create things that are in the future, but it's still taking you out of the present moment. And then it's going to overwhelm you. You have to remember to bring your side clarity in that direction instead of your mind taking taking it to, like, taking you out of, out of, uh, out of, alignment essentially and then you get all discombobulated how many minutes should, okay so my work my second vocabulary that i wanted to get clarification was holistic what does that mean whole it means mind body spirit it means taking into consideration not only the mental aspects of your health but the physical aspects of your health and the spiritual aspects of yourself I teach from a parole energy beings. I use energy and spirituality interchange. Like, I have to consider the fact that, and this has been proven by physics, the science of medicine, that we're all we're made up of all these energy particles. So we don't never think about, it. have to go into what are the subtleties that I feel in my body? What is what how do I how, how do I feel emotional? sleep eating well supplements if needed and then doing your mental health self-development introspection so to, to create you can work as efficiently as possible that was a lot of questions um. <laughs> how I work <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for taking this time. And how do people find you? Um, you can check me out on my Instagram handle at the Balance Effect, and you can contact me via email that way, as well as uh, you can find me on LinkedIn um, or my podcast handle at the Book. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time out of your busy schedule and being with us. Hopefully, we'll be able to do more. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Bye. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.